everybody. We are so glad you're here for another episode of Flowers and Friends Talk Show. We are hosted by Bloom TV Network. And if you are not a subscriber, head on over there right after this show, but don't go until we're done. My name is Dion Woods. I'm the owner and artist at the Turquoise Iris, and I am so happy to be joining you on this Friday today. Hi, I'm Ana Galena. I am a floral designer and I'm an expert here on Bloom TV. And I have some great news for you guys today because we are premiering internationally, worldwide, a pilot video I made for Bloom TV on edible flowers. Yay! So I'm going to be sharing that information <laughs> in a little while. Yay! That is very exciting. I'm Kara Jamison. I'm also one of the co-hosts of the Flowers and Friends talk show for Bloom TV Network. I'm a cut flower grower and educator and just love learning about all things flowers. You know, one thing about this talk show that I love, it's really exposed me to different flower things I never knew anything about. So with that said, let's get into today's show. Let's do it. you guys but after last week's show with christy rice which if you guys missed that the art of joy's sake mm -hmm. is a watercolor she walks us through 48 tutorials and it breaks it down in a very basic way mm -hmm. and i'm going to be honest with you i've been a little bit um scared of watercolor I, ladies mm -hmm. i know when yeah. we first found out <laughs> we were having a watercolor artist um even though i'm an artist i work more with acrylics and so I was still intimidated by the fact mm -hmm. that I can't control the water. And I really got to thinking about, wait a minute, I do this in large scale. So how do I break it down mm -hmm. in the simplest forms? And I, we were laughing because I'm sure you guys, you've never watercolored before. No, not even no. anything. And yeah. so I was, you know, this was what we painted. And uh -huh. through Christy's instruction, I was really happy with it. And I think Kara, Anna, did we not find ourselves totally immersed in our tutorial last week? Um, yes, like it was funny. Uh, we have Monica, <laughs> a producer of our show, behind the scenes, and she was sending us all these questions, and like we weren't seeing it because we were so into what we were painting. And like, <laughs> so she taught us how, which I have it right behind me, she taught us how to do a simple five petaled flower. Here's mine right here. <laughs> but one of my favorite things that she taught us to do was color blocking. Because I'm not that confident with painting because I just, I haven't painted since elementary school. And so she taught us how to color block. And it's basically just putting little blobs of color on the page. And after a while, I like didn't want to stop because it's like, I got to fill this thing up. This is really fun. <laughs> yeah. I totally went out of my comfort zone it was it was hard for me and it still is and i'm not sure when i'm gonna be able to show you guys whatever i'm doing but you know what i like about trying new things i mean if you it's time it's it's time you give yourself to try something new you don't need mm -hmm. to prove it to anyone mm -mm. i mean sometimes when you do these activities something in your brain starts happening mm -hmm. that it activates and yeah. it's good because it takes you out of your comfort zone as i mm -hmm. said and it's it's joyful at the end it's i don't want to show you what i did because yeah. it was terrible but no. that's okay i don't need to do it for someone else this right. is stuff i'm doing for myself yes and like you said kara i mean we were so into it we were not paying attention to anything else. <laughs> so that's always good to yeah. stop the noise from outside, even though we're host at a talk show. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so true. And it it really kind of lit a fire underneath me because I didn't want to stop. Right. You know, when we're done with the show, we've got to go in with our lives. But I could not wait to get back to this. And I picked up another, I turned the page 
And even though I'm, I, I know all the things that I could have done differently, I enjoyed, I flipped the page and girls, I brought the sunflowers back. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh that's so beautiful. See, and I thought, I, just, I, I need to send Christy a message and just say, is she, it was something inside that I thought, no, wait, that was so fun. I'm going to do this again. And so it felt like I'm like, I keep saying this, that I'm learning more than what I had no idea everything I would learn on Bloom TV. Mm -hmm. I thought I already knew so much, mm -hmm. but I feel like this summer has taken me to the Votech or right? like, I'm, I'm taking college classes, but they're not the kind that I took when I was oh, 19 right? years old. Like yeah. this is a whole new experience for me. And every time I show up each week, I'm learning something new. And so I thought with Christy's book, and with what I learned, that I should definitely send her a message, which brings me to the fact that I went down a whole rabbit hole last night on Gloria's Instagram. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I love what she's doing. I, but why don't we, before we jump into Gloria, Gloria, why don't we show our audience that was not here last time? Absolutely. Let's do that. Let's show last week's video. This is a great entry point for anyone who's really new to watercolor because the it's low pressure you know you're not trying to recreate nature you're you're trying to embellish it you're trying to distill nature down to the parts you love the most oh and i love very, that so much christy very That's freeing nice. very so freeing. The same type of petals that we just did on our watercolor paper okay as big as as big as i want look just naturally and you're using your fan brush, right? I am. I am. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna pretend the wind is blowing. Okay. <laughs> blowing straight through this field of flowers, and I'm gonna have them, woo, just kind of rocking and rolling off to the side. The more drips, the better, because I actually love the fluidity, fluidity and rhythm of the the actual drips provide an abstract painting. And then I'm gonna do my fifth little petal as just one as if it were kind of falling off to the side. And while my brush is dirty, I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna go into a coral colored. It's a little bit warmer. It's gonna create a little bit more contrast. And I'm gonna go over just a few of those. I, I don't paint, but I have been very inspired to paint lately. And so I actually got some acrylic out last night and I just started painting flowers and I didn't go into it trying to paint a specific one because I knew that I probably couldn't make it look realistic. And mm -hmm. uh, as I was painting it, I started to see some anemone flowers that I grew two years ago. Aww. And it's easy to make that connection. Absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that, Kara. You started to, because you're, it was kind of stored in your memory, right? It was kind of housed there. Like, okay, I know how to do a flower. I've seen them. <laughs> I grow them. Oh I want to go back. Let's do that again. We've got to have her on again, right? Christy Rice, we'll get her back on, right, ladies? Totally. And someone was just asking um, where they can get the book. It's a really good book. It's easy to follow. So we have a book club on Bloom TV where you can get all the books of the experts or the authors that we're inviting to the show. And that I think that's the easiest way to get them because you just go to bloomtvnetwork.com and you click where it says book club and you have a really beautiful list of books that we truly recommend. <laughs> yes. Well, today's talk show is going to be fun. And I have a whole lot of questions. Me because too. We are going to be learning about the art of pressed florals. And I know when I have been talking about this show on Instagram, I had several people in Facebook that said, Ooh, this is a topic I've really been wanting to know about. So today we have pressed floral artist, Gloria Demita that we are going to bring on screen and say hello to. Hello, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Oh, um, okay. I can't hear her at the moment. Let's see here. Technology doing yeah. its jokes on us. <laughs> technology doing technology things. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Gloria, can you hear us? Uh, okay. Aw. 
Okay, we're gonna get this figured out. <laughs> we will. Yes. You guys, thank you for, for tuning in with us right now. Remember to tag your friends on this video. Um, we're here every single Friday at 12 o'clock Central, 11 Mountain, 10 a.m. Pacific, and 1 o'clock Eastern. See how I work those time zones yeah. there. But every <laughs> single week we bring on the guests who are often are experts on Bloom TV where you can learn from them. You can watch their videos on Bloom, but we give you like a sneak peek straight into the Blooms, wait, to the Blooms, uh, literally <laughs> through the Blooms. Um, because of our guest, Gloria, can you hear me now, sister? I just re, um, I can hear you okay. guys. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. We're on. <laughs> We are on. Yay, Gloria. We are so excited. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Well, Gloria Demita is a multi-talented botanical artist who specializes in botanical collages and digital designs made with pressed florals. And I'm reading here that you have been picking and pressing flowers since you were eight years old. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, that's correct. I grew up on a farm in Niagara in the Lake, and there wasn't much to do, so that's basically how I ran my days. Oh, wow. Okay. So did anyone teach you how to press the flowers? Like, how did you know what to do at eight years old? <laughs> well, um, I do have some botanists in it, and my, my ancestors are from Slovenia, okay. oh. and they do quite a bit. Um, and so, knowing that, I started researching and reading books on it, internet at the time. <laughs> but uh -huh. I read a lot of books about it, and then just a lot of practice. So, I have to tell you, because today is my husband's, it's our anniversary today. Oh, and I got to thinking about, have I ever pressed flowers? Because I have so many questions for you, Gloria. I am so inspired by your work and I just really want to play. And I got to thinking, have I ever done this before? And the only time I remember ever doing this was the very first rose Matt gave me when we were dating. I was 18, he was 16. And so we weren't married. So this was like 28, 29 years ago. And I preserved that red rose by pressing it into like a note. But uh, I figure there's got to be more, some little bit more advanced nowadays or, or something. Am I right or am I wrong? Is it is it still just pressing between two books and that type of thing? It, it all, all depends on the flower. You use three main ways. So there's three ways I, I, I do books, but I have my press here. Um, I can't, so these, these are my presses that, um, uh -huh. and I use a microwave, I, oh. um, but it all depends on the flower because you might think that, um, a rose would, would press well in, in the microwave or the, like there's just that you want to get. If you want the 3d effect, I, I don't recommend the microwave. Um, um, wrinkled effect or tissue paper effect. I would use silica, but then some flowers, if you destroy the flower, or if some flowers, if you put in the microwave, you will destroy the flower. Um, so actually writing a book about it, just so I can remember myself, but there are many yeah. different, <laughs> different. You, de you definitely should write a book because we have a lot of people right here that are anxious to learn. And I think um, a lot of us have tried to press flowers. Some of them had rotten, have a lot of stuff ha has happened. And why don't we start from the beginning, please? Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah this isn't your typical, hey, I'm going to press this red rose in between a note my, my, my boyfriend gave me. That is <laughs> like artwork. Like you are a master, not only in flower pressing, but you're designing. It's a this is art and you're talking about composition and you're talking about the balance and everything of your flowers. There's a lot more here. And I think that's what just pulls people in. Right. But the trick is, is to have the flowers press and, and manage that and, and um, get really good at it before, before you start big projects like that. Start with simplicity and um, 
even even some of my flowers still go brown but at the end of the day it depends where where you live and what the moisture level is in the house um, okay. to ensure the best quality okay so, well that makes total sense because i have some questions i'm going to ask you here in a little bit about the moisture in the house okay so I would love to know, Gloria, you know, tell us about what you do with your pressed flowers. You make prints and you teach uh, people how to do this. Is that right? Yes, I do. Um, mostly online. Okay. Through my YouTube. Well, I have a YouTube channel that I, I've started and okay. just little clips on Instagram. I did a clip on uh, blue delphiniums. So okay. Oh, oh that's cool. Ooh, um, and basically when I started basement, most people will do it in the basement because it is a messy job, but that, that's the absolute is because basement is the most moisture. Mm -hmm. So number one, if you're likely going to have brown flowers, right. Unless mm. you have a humidifier, dehumidifier. Okay. Uh -huh. Even to store the flowers, you don't want store them in the basement okay okay well um gloria that explains why that red rose is now a brown crumpled up <laughs> i mean 28 years but still it's there's a better way to do it um tell me a little bit about how you actually turned this into your business because this is more than just your creative outlet this is your business right gloria this is yes it's my business all the tutorials I, I do sell some of my art, art but so I tend to just like to share my tutorials and some of my smaller pieces I am listing now okay. but I was selling cards when I was in my 20s in Niagara in the Lake when I didn't have any other job but right now now this is just part of time for me okay all right well let's dive in let's go in and let's see exactly what your process kind of looks like gloria yeah okay so, so i have some newspapers i i don't have the press that i use is plywood um in between and then layered papers right the papers that i use are just from like right and that is what you need, need to suck the moisture. You're going to use just copy paper. It doesn't absorb as much. much. So um, for example, okay. these flowers here, these verbenas, I would just take the flower. Okay. And so you're separating each little segment of the verbena. Right. If I wanted to do, do is just grab. Can you see this? Grab my scissors and. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yes. So. And, I and missed then the I would. Flower. This is the verbena. Okay. Okay. So we'll get the base. Uh huh. You want to. You, you don't. You want to use as because. That's the moisture, right? Um, um, so the stems contain a lot of the moisture. Just use the petals. And then something like a, a little trick I use for these guys. Is this, do you see this little circle in the middle? Uh-huh. Yes. I roll it out with my finger. Okay. And I would put it down like that. Because these, wow. these little ball, that little ball here uh -huh. contains a a lot of moisture we wouldn't yes so that is what i do for these guys um okay um, uh, same, same with one of these um queens and lace uh-huh yes you're gonna use you can take off the stem and just oh, cool place it now i'm gonna put the paper over top okay okay it's so it does more the matter. better it doesn't matter that there's a lot of red ink on the paper. No, it does Ooh. not because okay. I mean, if, if 
you're if some of my papers do have pen ink, I want uh -huh. the pen ink getting all on it. But the okay. newsprint ink is fine. Okay. Okay. And, and so it in between these um, sheets of plywood, my uh -huh. plywood by twelve inches. Okay. Um, I just just got them cut at, at Lowe's. Okay. And the weight I'm using here is a brick. Okay. Mm. But you can okay. Pick flower, right? So these these delicate flowers, I might use just just a pitcher of water on top. The fl okay. flower is sure. Gloria, may I ask you why you choose newspaper over any other type of paper? Is there is there a reason that the newspaper, or is it just because it it's something you have and you're repurposing your newspaper? Is that why? Mm. Well, that's part of it, but but it retains the moisture the most. Okay. Okay. okay that's good. Okay. To know. So, and if you were going to be paper, you would have to change the newspaper like every day or even twice a day. Okay. Uh, it depends flower, right? Um, for those verbenas and uh -huh. something, they're delicate. Uh -huh. You don't want, want too much weight on it. You want just a little bit of water on top of the plywood. Because if you put water. too much weight, you're, you're going to get fresh. So, um, okay. But so, if it was a rose, you get harder because it, harder. it Right. It's thicker. But I also use silica with my roses. Okay. Depends on the look I want. If I want the 3D effect, I'm going to use uh -huh. silica. If I want the, for a rose, I would use, um, I would use a microwave. But, okay. um, um, but then again, if I, I were to put, I will get, a lot of times I'll get a brown flower. I'll show you what I mean. So here, here's the after. So, so here's the verbenas. So oh, verbena mm -hmm. and uh -huh. those little. That's that's just with plywood and maybe a pitcher of water on, on top. How do okay. you know when you're going to um, stick something in the microwave, Gloria? You keep, you know, you mentioned that, and I, I think if I, I put it I'm in like, there, it would cook it and turn it brown. But that's not the case. <laughs> that is right. So you oh. have to. Adjust my camera. It's okay. My rule of thumb is that, that flowers, I don't usually put them in the microwave for gar like those delicate garden flowers. I don't like like thicker flowers can go in the microwave and you, you'll you'll get a quicker. Um, so say it's something like delphiniums, you can put those in the microwave. Okay. Um. So, I, so I'm just picturing this. Do I just put the flower on a plate or is there like a special little thing you buy? <laughs> no, so you, you and how long? Put in the news, you put it in the newspaper and then you put casserole dishes on top. To, and then, oh, okay. And then you put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Thickness of the flower. It's really trial and error. Okay. Um, um, Okay. Is it kind of, it's, well, this sounds silly. It's like a faster dehydrator. Is that right? Like, is that, it's just faster than a normal dehydrator you would plug in the microwave is? Yeah, than a dehydrator. But the, the, the difference is you're taking it, I just, the microwave, and, and you're letting the steam out. Okay. Because if you keep the oh. steam in the flour, I go through, through these, step by step on my tutorials okay okay and it, it's really really hard to explain because yeah. there's, there's there's a method one thing, thing to say yeah just stick it in the microwave for 30 seconds and everything will be fine so sometimes yeah i basically have a recipe book coming out okay. oh okay. nice okay can't wait for that <laughs> that is great so so for beginners like me who wants to press flowers, I would probably stick with your plywood thing that you have right there. And I have a question. Mm -hmm. So when you are putting like the flowers that you just put on the newspaper, are you putting just one layer of flowers and then a piece of wood and then another layer of flowers and then a piece of wood? 
just one layer or can you do multiple layers? That's a good question. Mm. You can do multiple layers as long as the flowers are similar. If the flowers are different consistencies, you're going to want to put the plywood on top. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yes, yeah, it does. It Definitely. does. Yes. So <laughs> whole another pile because you can't use the same weight. So if you're doing rows underneath that weight, but then if you're going to do something like the verbena, because that verbena uh -huh. cannot handle the same weight. Okay. That's why so I, I don't use those traditional presses. I'm sure you've all seen how you screw the, the weight kind of in and it, it squeezes them but uh -huh. if all this basically it's squishing the flowers but it, some flowers can't handle too much squishing yeah okay. i got gotcha. you yeah like um, what i what i want to ask you is i'm noticing and when i'm looking through your instagram and looking through your beautiful images everyone if you're not following gloria you can find her beautiful work on Instagram. Her pictures are very bold and, and vibrant. So um, I'm noticing that the colors all stay really brilliant. So you're, you're not losing that intensity, uh -huh. even though they're pressed. And I feel like I would get that wrong. And I, I know you have a recipe list um, and, and really st and walk th people through that. But is there a, a couple of tips that you could give us for how to keep the vibrancy? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what you're seeing a lot of times is right after I, I take them out of my seat, some mm -hmm. of the flowers will, will fade, unfortunately. Okay. Um, okay. But those flowers, um, that nature, this is nature. This is us. Mm -hmm. Like we all sure. get older. Our looks change, right? So yes. when you, when you can appreciate a thin, I, I mean, you, you learned a lot, right? Yeah. Right, right. One of my, one of my, mine is, put it this way. One okay. of my huge collages is about three years old. And okay. I had it hanging in my mother-in-law's condo where there was some man going nonstop. And each person that saw that, that collage was amazing. It was like remarkable um, because it was real. Name my in law I can't go outside, so um, that's what I was aiming to do: is to create me. They didn't. The first thing they saw was not the fading flowers. Like the greens were were faded. They just uh -huh. noticed the other flowers, and they noticed the last the fading of flowers mm -hmm. um but i was not, not aiming to, to put the flower the, the collage in a, a condo with a lot of a lot of sunlight so it did fade but if you keep huh? keep it out of the sun you will retain the vibrancy a lot better Okay. Um, okay. Well, that's a good tip right there is just yeah, keeping I, it out of sun and then also embracing the fact that it will discolor. It's right. going to age just like us because it is part of nature. So I love that perspective. And that makes me, um, that almost makes me look forward to watching it change yeah. and, and dry because as we should embrace the, the aging process. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, I love right. that. But the other thing I wanted to, I do, because I've been doing this for so long i also know which flowers will fade i know yes. which flowers from and yes. and which ones stay longer uh-huh um that's something I oh can you hear me can let's see here hear you. oh yes okay i had i actually to go along with that i had a two-part question to ask you um i would love to know like what's your favorite flower to press and also, if you're a beginner, just like me, do you have a couple of flowers that you would recommend to start with? Kind of like a, I don't want to say no fail, because I know humidity plays an issue and all of that. But are, is there a couple of flowers that just generally do well, 
each time you press them? Generally, the outfit for any beginner would be a pansy. Okay. If you have pansies near your house, because for one, one they're inexpensive. Uh, they like this as much as you want. As, as, as many as you pick will grow, grow back. Um, whereas peonies, yes, I love peonies, but you only get so many of those a season. Um, right. Peonies would be a more of a trickier flower. I have that tutorial because it is a harder flower. And it's one of my most requested. Um, another one that I would probably, uh, there's a lot of symmetry to a hydro. It's, it's fun to compose with hydrangeas. So that's uh -huh. another one and it's hmm. easy. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yes. I love that because a lot of us have access to those flowers and yeah. I think it's easier. I mean, if we try with something that's out there that we can get it, uh, it's more encouraging other than having to look for flowers that are not out there for us. So yeah. I, I really like what you just told us, Gloria, because I think. Ooh, that's beautiful. I love really? the color to those. See, this is a brown one. The, the uh -huh. brown, um, it, it one ha happened because I I purposely put a lot, a lot more pressure on than I would nor okay. normally oh. do, and uh -huh. so I just wanted to show you uh, that. that. And okay, then, please okay. show us. I want to see all of your demos. Um, I when you're gonna like, do you grow these flowers? Also, that was my other question. Do you have a garden outside where you, you're picking from, or do you just go shopping? <laughs> I do shop a lot. But I <laughs> have a beautiful garden. I'm mostly in, in pots and okay. until the end of the season. In the fall. My parents have a farm in Niagara in the Lake, so uh -huh. I go there. And, and I also love, I head up north and uh -huh. I hike through the mountains. And I find inspiration there. <laughs> I uh, it, it's my go-to. It's it's like meditation for me. Uh huh. Absolutely. So, so with um, in your garden, do you grow dahlias? I have some dahlias. Okay. Yes. So I had a question. So I picked this dahlia, which it's all shriveled um, because I'm drying it. So Ooh. it is really thick. You know, this is not a cafe au lait, but it's like similar. It's like really thick. If I wanted to press this, would I need to take each petal off? Like, could you not press this whole flower since it's so thick? Like, would you need to dissect something big like this? Good um, question. Um, I'm just going to show you. Is it kind of like... Yes. 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 Uh huh. So, for this one, I would probably put this in the microwave or silica in a book. Oh, okay. Um, I I do know some people that do, and then put them back together. That that is going to take you a very long time, and I. <gasps> okay. But I don't have patience. Um. <laughs> For this one, I'm putting in silica. Okay. And because if you put it in the microwave, it'll 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 go flat. I can do it, but it's going to be a lot of uh, babysitting. Okay. You change the paper quite often. Okay. Change the paper. And, All right. And then keep re microwaving it. Um, okay. But yeah, it is possible. Well, all right. I love you. that you said change the paper, Kara, because yeah. Kara, I, I know that you and your daughter pulled some of your flowers because, um, Lori, what you might not know about um, our beautiful Kara here is she is a cut flower grower and her entire property, it looks like your entire property. I know it's not, but you have <laughs> like this field of flowers. And so she uh -huh. has them in abundance. And so I know mm -hmm. you and your daughter went and pressed some flowers last week, didn't you? Yeah, as part of our nature study for our school, I was like, let's get outside and enjoy nature. 
And so I gave all my kids the task of, I want you to find a color in every part of the rainbow, plus, you know, black, brown. I want you to find all those colors on our farm. And it's quite easy to do that here because I do grow many <laughs> flowers. I've got some right here. Um, I really just wanted them to get outside and just see nature. And when they found all these flowers, we took them back inside and I was like, let's make a collage on paper with the flowers and let's really deconstruct them. And, and we were basically going to press the flowers, but I didn't know what I was doing. This was just like a fun little ex ex exercise uh, with my kids. And so I had some questions for Gloria because what I did was I have a little example to show you here. And I actually have a video I'm going to post on our Instagram page, the flowers and friends underscore talk show of my daughter and I making our collages. But so I have cute. this sheet of paper right here. If I tilt it too much, it's going to fall everywhere. What? But we just made wow. little collages. I love it. Printer paper, because that's all I had. Uh -huh. And my daughter just had so much fun uh just making this like she would find new petals and be like oh mommy i want to add this i want to add that and so how i did it was so we put it on the printer paper and then okay. i put a magazine on top okay and then i put another piece of paper with flowers put a magazine on top and then i eventually put like my big garden encyclopedias as weight on there and what I've noticed, it's been like a week and a half is, well, it's a trial and error thing with pressing flowers. I have some flowers that did great and some flowers that molded. Ah. And I'm not sure why they molded. <laughs> Ooh, oh, hello, I just blew them. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love for Gloria to tell me, what does she think that I did wrong? Could it be? because I was putting too many different size flowers on the page, perhaps they were not all the same, possibly. Hmm. Hmm. That I don't is know. Because... Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Where did you, where were you pressing them? Well, I was doing them inside of my house and I will say our house is very humid. We actually have to run dehumidifiers in our house. Uh, to take some of the moisture out there. I'm in Tennessee. It's very humid here. And so I'm wondering if that played a part in some of the molding issues. Like um, like my Cosmos molded here. I'm like, why did my pretty Cosmos mold? Aww. <laughs> Aww. Cosmos mold, uh, like if, if, you're, if you're putting all, like, but if you're mixing the flowers, that's because some flowers yeah. will actually take from the other flower okay if i okay right so sometimes for example flower that's i think is already crisp and pressed and and ready to go press if i i still have flowers that are not quite ready yet that that dry moisture from the other flower okay. and it, it may not have been brown after okay that makes total sense because yeah. my, my thought with creating this collage is i see beautiful press floral collages online all the time and so i didn't realize that you guys were pressing flowers individually and it makes total sense because mm -hmm. i know with seed starting when i start them in my soil blocks i want to make sure that i'm using the exact same seed for the for each soil block for that tray i don't want to mix them because each seed, although I may be growing a pink snapdragon, this yellow snapdragon may take longer to germinate. So that makes sense that when I am pressing flowers, I need to make sure that I'm sticking with the same thickness of each flower. And so and that's good to know. Thank you, Gloria, for I, the tip. I think that's one of the best things of this flowers and friends talk show because sometimes we see stuff out there and we make an idea of how it's done i mean whenever we see a collage i always thought the same i mean you create the collage then you press it and that's done but now we're learning no you first press your flowers and then you create your collage and that is 
Truly right. amazing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, so I learned so much with my segment. Dion, I believe you had a question for Gloria as well. I do. And I'm, I mm. think I would have done the same thing, Kara. I have uh -huh. no doubt that I would have put them all together because we're all trying to be efficient. Like it's more efficient <laughs> yeah. to put them all on one tray and like, you know, mine would be overlapping and weaving and, and, and talking and mingling. And it makes so much more sense to keep them completely separate. So mm -hmm. I also am, am concerned about the middle part because it's so thick. And so I don't know if I would have thought to deconstruct like Gloria's mentioned and, and Kara mentioned to deconstruct them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so here's what I have. We have a pool in the back and we planted some hibiscus shrubs and they're growing now that it's 100 degrees for the last month. They're growing rapid, but you uh -huh. know, they don't last long. I get them for one day, right, Gloria? Like I'm getting these hibiscus for one day. Yeah, that's right. So after I was, right, I was looking at your Instagram last night and my favorite part of what you do are when you take your blooms and you're turning them into like artwork and they look like, a, a you know, your your artwork is a is a female body and she's got her petals on and she's got hats oh, on yeah. and she's, you know, her, her, so I took this hibiscus and I went through this morning and I didn't really give myself a whole lot of time because I really wanted you to tell me how to do it. But <laughs> I took this and I thought, what a cute tutu. Mm, like, yes. Uh, right? Like this. Yeah, is, that's right. Yeah. This, so if I want to press this, it's very thick here in the center. So do I take the green part off of here and then just flatten each one of my hibiscus petals? take the green off i'm i'm showing okay. you right here here okay i'm gonna pull that off then and then i have now uh, they're gonna separate it's okay for them to separate my they're not separating but if they okay. were to separate see i, I took the green off <laughs> okay the okay. thing is i i do have to cut this this, this part off so this okay we're cutting off. that off we're cutting out the center Okay. All right. All right. And we're putting it this. Um, okay. I'm going to cut this off first. I'm taking off the green. And so now I am left with all of my delicious petals. And so would I literally need to take each one and separate it with its own top and bottom pressing? Yes. And break. Yeah. That's how you would do it. But mine, mine did not break. I don't know if okay, well, you guys can. I may have, I may have encouraged a little bit of breakage. Okay. I may have, I may have pulled and tugged a little bit more than you. So I, I think I did that thinking. Go ahead, Gloria. Now if I, it would actually glue, glue together almost. Um, so that's one of the things about putting it in the microwave. Sometimes it, you could, you could reposition those as you want them like okay. say a tulip for you okay. know sometimes, sometimes the tulips do break i just put them how i want them and then i and then when i peel it off they're stuck together I'm not sure okay. if that makes sense yes yeah. so it does so if i wanted to do the full one but i wanted to press it flat because these are about eight inch in diameter and i love this i love this so I would first take off the center, correct? I would yes. cut the center and then take the green off and then press it down flat. Yes. All right. I'm doing and I would, the one that I have is quite thick. So I would put that one in the microwave for about, about and then I would put it in the mm. press flat, but not too heavy. Okay. And then okay. I would check on, on it later on that night in the microwave for another 30 seconds, and, and then it'll be done the next day. Okay. So you would take this flat the way I have this. I've taken the, the green off the center. I'm going to flatten it and put it into the microwave for a little bit. Maybe 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And then what you would do when you do your collages is you lay it on decorative, beautiful paper. Do you have a pre preference on your paper and do you have a preference on your glue? Mm. Use, 
you can find in my links on my website but it's basically it's called shazen paper s-h-i-z-e-n okay it's oriental paper it's okay. uh it's watercolor paper it's beautiful um they come in different okay. colors as well so okay so I'm going to do those. The other thing that the last thing that I did earlier was a light pink one and it was already browning on the edges, but I took the plate and I put a piece of wax paper over it and I started the pressing, but you know what I didn't do, Gloria? I didn't cut out the center piece. Is that going to cause mold? Ooh. Your problem there is the wax puts the moisture back in. It's not going anywhere oh okay that's good to know <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> neither did i <laughs> i thought i was being so smart you know, I know. i've done I it like that before no wonder they rot <laughs> yeah i thought because that would keep them from sticking so i was like i'm gonna get my wax paper out and i'll be so smart no so, that's okay. that's the word the news print I'm telling you is the best paper because it's, it's almost because it's very, very, you can, you can, it doesn't stick as bad. That as makes gotcha. perfect makes sense, sense. My friend. Yeah. That totally. makes, there's, there's, a chemical, there's, there's a chemical in some stick. So don't, don't want to do that. All right. Well, Anna, I don't know about you, but did you know that wax paper was a no go? <laughs> No, I've done it like that. And I and this is one of the reasons why I love so much this show. I mean, being with friends talking about flowers and learning so much. I thought I thought wax paper was the best way to do it. <laughs> and now we've learned it's not. Thank you so much, Gloria. And this has been an incredible the glue show. Is just, sorry, the glue is just craft glue. There's no special glue. It has to be okay. water based. Like Perfect. Elmer's glue? Is that is that right? That's right. Elmer's glue? Okay, no, great. Right. Dollar store. Any any glue is fine. Okay. <gasps> great. Um, we have Thank a lot you. of comments here. A lot of people saying they would have used wax paper too. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gloria. We've learned so much from you, and I think we are all so excited to start pressing some flowers and creating collages. Aren't we, Kara? Now we know how to make them. Yes, yes. Make, now we know how sure not to make, make them me to do it. <laughs> love your creations. Totally, and to all our friends, I want to remind you, please, whenever you create something from the show, tag us, because we really want to see what you're doing. If you have any questions, please. write to us, because we'd like to give some follow-up on everything that we're doing every week here on Flowers and Friends. Thank you so much, Gloria. Thank you. And now I want to go into what we've been waiting for, my pilot premiering on the 28th. I'm so happy. I hey, that's our are. girl right there. Anna, you look incredible. I am chomping at the bit for the 28th to get here so I can dive in and watch this um, video of you, sister. I know you've been working so hard on this. Yes, we've been working on this for months. It's, um, it's a pilot for a series we would like to create on the magic of flowers. Uh, this pilot show is on edible flowers and how, here's the main idea. I mean, I'm a floral designer and I've experienced how flowers um, create huge impacts on our life. Flower mm -hmm. arrangements when you bring them into your life. So the series is all about exploring if the same thing happens when you eat them, when you're painting them. I have just learned that it happens when you press them because of all these different things that like the meditation part, like learning to let go. I mean, a lot of stuff that it's like magical, but it's actually having the right ingredients. So this first episode is about exploring edible flowers and it's going to premiere worldwide on August 28th. Um, you need to um, subscribe to a link we have on bloomtvnetwork.com and so you can be part of the premiere party. 
the the show is in Spanish, but it has subtitles. And really, it's a show you want to do because we put so much effort. I have a short clip here. It's in Spanish, but look at the graphics. They're amazing. Let's do it. Let's see this little video. Me entusiasma grabar este episodio sobre flores comestibles porque muy poca gente sabe que existen. Me interesa saber cómo se cultivan, cuáles flores nos podemos comer. Quiero saber por qué casi no las vemos ni sabemos que existen. Así como por qué cuando nos las sirven en un platillo las hacemos a un lado y no nos las comemos. Pero sobre todo, quiero explorar la magia de una flor en la comida. I get chills just looking at that. And mostly what it says is that I want to explore how edible flowers are grown, how uh, sometimes when they serve them to us in, in a restaurant or, or wherever, we usually don't eat them. We really don't know if we're supposed to or not. So I, I try to dig into this to see what's going on. Why aren't we seeing them enough? And why when we see them, we're afraid to try them? And how, if you let yourself live the experience, it's so joyful. So I'm sure you're gonna love it because it was made with so much love and it's really beautiful. I love the intensity. It was a little bit dramatic. Like it got me a little bit hyped. Like I was like, oh, this is, this is, I, I love the music and the enthusiasm in your voice. And of course the photography and everything is just so beautiful. So if you go to bloomtvnetwork.com at the very top, you're going to see flowers and friends where you can watch our replays, but you also are going to see watch party. And I did this right before we went on here today. So you're going to see watch party. It looks a little different than it does right now, but there's watch party. You can click on that and then mm -hmm. you get to sign up to pick your time and it will go on your calendar. So it was easy. I didn't really have to do anything. Then just type in my name and my email. And then I got a notification that I was signed up and I'm going to watch this Ooh. watch party. And on top of that, there was another new box at the top that had to do with Miss Holly and what she's got going on, Kara. You wanna tell us a little bit about that? Oh. Yeah, so we have something really fun and new going on with Bloom TV. Holly Capelli, who she has been one of our guest co-hosts uh, for the Flowers and Friends talk show a couple of times for us. She is starting a new segment called Bloom Zooms Big Family Summers with Holly Capelli. And the first one is gonna be Monday, August 15th. And it's going to be every month on the 15th. And the purpose of these Bloom Zooms is for all of the subscribers to get to know uh, the flower experts that are on Bloom TV Network. You know, just building community, talking with each other, you know, getting to know each other. And the first one is open for everyone to join. And so you just go to that link on bloomtvnetwork.com to sign up. And uh, all the future ones, though, are exclusive to Bloom TV subscribers. But we do actually have a free month promotion mm -hmm. going on right now that you guys can sign up for on Bloom sure. TV. And also for the Flowers and Friends talk show, we do a giveaway each week. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we give away a year, <laughs> a year subscription to Bloom Incredible. TV. We yes. Have one winner each week. Anna, do you want to tell us who the winner is? This oh, week? yes. We get excited every week. We have a new winner. So every week you have the opportunity to be a part of this. So here's our winner. Laura Morales. Laura Morales, you have won a yearly subscription to Bloom TV. Please write to us, get a hold on to us so we can tell you how to use your gift. And remember, every week you get a chance to subscribe to this um, giveaway. Absolutely. And do so because I've got a bunch of paint in here in stock and I like to ship paint too. So for each week, there's a winner. I'm also sending you paint that I love to use. Um, I use on my canvas, my furniture, my hats, just about everything else that I paint. So I want to share that with our Bloom audience as well. Gloria, we want to thank you, ladies. I am excited to see what we're going to be pressing in the next few weeks. And we mm -hmm. want to thank every single person on here for watching. And I 
Before you go today, we also want to thank our sponsors. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. Uh, thank you, friends. I am so grateful you're here. Thank you for joining us. You make our weeks and our weekends so much better when you show up with us every single Friday. Yes, remember we're here every Friday at 10 Pacific time, noon mountain time, 1 p.m. Eastern time? Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. We love talking with you. Tell them why, Kara. Because everything is better with flowers and friends. Bye, guys. Woo!